everyone. This is Veronica with So It Seems, and welcome to my studio. I have a project I want to start working on today. We are in the middle of summer, and here in Central Oregon, it gets very hot. We actually had uh, almost a couple of weeks where we were in the hundreds, and with that hot weather, it can be hard to stay cool especially for my girls. And when we go to church on Sundays, my youngest will get dressed in um, a nice outfit, but it's wool and it's designed for the fall and she doesn't understand that it's going to be too hot. So today I'm going to actually make a new project and it's gonna be these little sundresses. The, the style is this one right here and it's just a simple uh, they call it a tent dress or a shift, and just a real simple little dress, sleeveless, uh, something that'll be nice and cool for the summer. But for both of my girls, I will probably lengthen it so that it will actually fall uh, just below the knee. So it's something that uh, they'll feel more comfortable with. They don't like to wear short dresses. And to make this pattern, I've actually chosen a couple of fabrics that I've had in my collection for a while. They are similar patterns, but in two different colors. And so it's kind of hard to see the colors, but they're very light. Here's a light pink and a light yellow. And so I'm going to make one for each of the girls out of each of these colors. Um, I think if I remember correctly, Abigail chose the yellow and then Madeline will have the pink, but I'll double check with the girls before I start cutting that out. The first thing I need to do is wash my fabric and dry it in the same way that I would be using the finished garment. So if I want to wash and dry it, I need to pre-wash and dry this so that it will shrink or do whatever it's going to do before I start making the garment. So let's go to the washing machine and pop these in. I now have my fabric laid out and I fold it in half. So my salvage edges are together and I've made those nice and even and I have my fold side right here on the edge. So now that I've got my fabric all laid out, I can get my pattern pieces and I can start laying those out and you see I'm uh, taking one of the dress parts uh, this is probably the dress front because it's laying on the fold the edge of the fabric the edge of the pattern needs to be on the fold of the fabric so I start laying that out and pinning it in place Now once I pinned this in place, I started looking at it and I realized that my fabric, even though it is a small floral print, it actually is directional. It's subtle, but the leaves on the flowers for this particular print are all at the bottom of the flowers and they're all facing the same way. So if I had laid this out and cut it out the way I had started laying it out, my flowers would actually be upside down. My daughter probably would not have noticed. Uh, most people probably would not have noticed, but it would have bugged me as I was working on it. So I went ahead and started relaying out the pattern pieces so that they were going in the right direction. Since I am making a smaller size uh, than all the sizes that are on the pattern. I can overlap my pattern pieces just a little bit. And you can see right now I'm just laying them out to see how they'll fit onto the fabric that I've got there. And you'll notice that some of my fabrics do overlap. But once I get this first one pinned down, then I can make the other pieces fit.
Now the second piece that's there, I know it's going to fit onto this folded piece of fabric because my size eight is further in than what the overall pattern piece is. If you are only going to be making one size of a pattern and you don't need any other sizes, then you can go ahead and cut the pattern piece, the, uh, the tissue paper, down to the size that you need. But since I am using this pattern for both a size 8 and a size 14 dress, I'm not going to cut off any of the sizes. I just cut out these pieces to the size 14 and then I am pinning my dress at the size 8 markings. When I lay my tissue paper down on the fabric, the tissue paper is a little wrinkly. But what I do is I put a pin in and I gently smooth the paper down. I know there are some people that will iron it down, but um, I am, am never real confident about that. And I just know I'm going to rip my pattern if I mess with it too much. I'm now cutting out my pattern. And you can see I have my four pieces here. I have the dress front on the fold, the dress back, two pieces cut for either side of the back. I am cutting out the facing. This is the back facing. No, I apologize. This is the front facing. And then up in the corner there is the back facing. So I'll get all these pieces cut out. On each pattern piece, they will have markings and notches. And along the edges of some of these pattern pieces are notches. It's important to cut those notches so that you can see them when you're cutting out your fabric. Those notches are there so that you can match up a couple of pieces to sew together. I am at the end of day two working on the sundress project. It's taking a while just because of life getting really busy and running here and there. But I've cut out both of the dresses. Now, <laughs> when I cut out the first one, I made a very large error. I laid out the yellow fabric first, and I've got this yellow fabric here. I laid that out first. Um, and I should have been cutting out the larger size, size 14. While I was getting the fabric and the pattern pieces put on, my brain started refiguring things and I actually cut out the smaller size, size 8, uh, without realizing that I did the wrong one. Now for my younger daughter, um, she actually said that was the color that she wanted. She didn't want pink. And my older daughter decided that uh, she wasn't actually quite in love with the yellow. She didn't want the pink fabric, but she wanted to look through uh, the fabric that I had. And so she found this evening this really pretty daisy fabric. So I cut out her size, size 14, from this daisy fabric. Uh, two of the pieces for each of the dresses needed to also be cut in interfacing. So this is uh, the facings that go under the dress around the neck. And they are fusible, so I'll be fusing those onto the back of the facing pieces. And for each of the dresses, it, the pattern does have an option for pockets. In the pattern itself on the sample, they have the pockets in the same fabric. That's not fun to me. 
So for the yellow dress, I actually found this really cute blue. Let's see if we can get there. That's a pretty good showing of that color combination. And for the daisies, I found this really pretty yellow. And the yellow actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Oh, there you go. You can see the yellow has some little white dots on it. And they're just really faint. You can't really see them too well unless you look up close. But I just, I really like this combination. I've always loved the combination of yellow with black and white. So I really am excited about that combination for that dress. So for tonight, I am done cutting out. And I should be able to have time tomorrow to be able to start pinning the pieces together and sewing them. Well, I had great plans of showing you some of the sewing process that I was going through to make these little sundresses. However, I got so excited making them that I got carried away and finished them completely without recording anything. I did take a couple of pictures of the finished dresses and I will insert them here so you can see them. But I'll also show you um, just a few little things that I did on the dresses. I'm not going to go into full details just because um, it is a paid for pattern. The first dress that I made was the little yellow dress for my youngest daughter. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, it's just a really simple dress. There's not a lot of complexity to it. The most difficult part, I think, for me was getting the facing and the opening right down here, just where uh, everything meets on this little section. Um, there's just a slight tuck there as I try to sew that, um, but it's not noticeable but I had fun. I found a cute little button and uh, the pattern calls for a type of closure. Where you're basically making this, but you're doing it with thread. And so you double your thread and you make a loop. And then with that doubled thread, you create knots around the thread. I've tried doing that several different times throughout the years and I cannot get the hang of it. Every time I mess it up in some way and I tried doing that whole loop and ended up becoming too small. So I said, forget it. I did some elastic on it so it's a lot easier. It has some give to it and my daughter can very easily undo it and put it on. And then of course, the little blue pockets. It's just a nice little detail. And for the hems, um, I didn't enlarge the patterns properly. They only needed to be lengthened. Um, I really should have taken the time to cut the pattern in. There's a, a line on the pattern piece that says lengthen or shorten. And I just got lazy and I didn't actually cut there and then lengthen the pattern. For my youngest it's not a problem. Um, for my older it's just <clears throat> it's right at the edge of being too short. <laughs> so she can still wear it comfortably. But I did um, a very small hem. Let's see. Uh, it, there we go. It's just a baby hem. And you can see the front, but there's the back. Just a very small hem. And it's a process. I saw it online in a YouTube video. Um, if I remember, I will try to link the video below. But basically, um, you're sewing a stitch for a quarter of an inch, pressing it over, pressing it under, trimming it, and then folding it under again and stitching. So it makes a really nice small hem. I did that on both dresses. And then this is the daisy dress. Here we have the dress 
and see the pockets. I had fun with the pockets because I found a little placket that had three buttons and they had three bumblebees. So I put a bumblebee on each pocket and then I put a bumblebee on the back closure. And another elastic buttonhole. It's just easier. I knew I was going to do that on this dress, but I ended up sewing the facing to I, I ended up sewing the facing seam before I put the piece in there. So it's just you can see there's the elastic shows, but it's a summer dress that will be good for this summer for my daughter. For my oldest daughter, uh, she'll grow out of it. Um, she's growing almost as tall as me now. And then we'll put it away until my youngest daughter can wear it. And I also did that baby hem. And I just, I love the, just the smallness of it. So that was my journey of making a couple of sundresses for my daughters. I'm sorry I didn't have video of the sewing process, but hopefully it's enough to let you see what I did and um, how I pulled that together. And it was actually a pretty quick project. I started working on this pattern, I think on a Wednesday and I had it done Saturday night. Um, and so that's just with several breaks and things like that. I was able to finish the dresses and had no problems. All right. Well, thank you for joining me in my studio. And I'm Veronica Johnson with Sew It Seams. And remember, keep stitching. <music>